In this episode, is Bitcoin on the brink of breaking 5300 and potentially testing 6k or is it about to pull back pretty drastically on the daily? With many coins boasting 2, 3, 4% gains today, will this continue or is it a slight uptrend before a massive pullback? Find out in this episode. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new, make sure to hit that button and then hit that other button and we can just jump into the video. We're going to be taking a look at both Bitcoin and Litecoin in this video today, but I want to start off with Bitcoin. Still, we have not pulled back to the 50 moving average here on the daily chart. That would be around 4,400 US dollars right here, that blue line right here. Uh, we have not. On the weekly, obviously, we're still facing that resistance of right around 5,300 US dollars, right where the 50 moving average is right there. Uh, we haven't been able to break through that kind of we bounced off of that uh, earlier and we still have not broken off of it however you can see these two candles these are two weekly candles are essentially the same in terms of the candle and wick lengths however i think that this candle will drastically change before it closes at the end of the week um, as well if we take a look on the rs the stochastic rsi you see instead of curving down a little bit like we saw we have still kind of just continued to move horizontally. Uh, will that continue? Probably not. We will have to probably pull back on this stochastic. Uh, if we look back for some clues to that, you can see uh, usually, you know, we get a pullback. Usually when we hit that 100, we get a pullback. Uh, pretty much every time when we hit 100, we get a pullback. Granted, this time at 100, it only went to about 65 and then bounced back and then all the way down. However, uh, whether or not that happens, still that would be a pullback. A pullback would be necessary. So whether or not it does something like this, uh, something like this, or if it does something like this, or something like this, uh, those are a little extended, but I think you get the point. It would still be necessary that we're probably going to have to have a pullback here. We're super extended on the weekly. Uh, how do we look on the daily, though? So I want to look at that. On the daily, it's kind of the opposite story, kind of all the way down here on the stochastic, and that could indicate uh, some shift upwards, and that could mean some short-term price action to the, to the upside. So that's something to look out for. And actually, on the four-hour, we've actually still continue to bounce off of that 50 moving average right here, which we were really testing for support here over the last few days since April 11th, really when we fell pretty drastically from, you know, 53, 54-ish to about 5,000. Um, actually fell all the way to about 4,900. But you can see right here that we've extended and we're kind of bouncing off of that right now. So that could continue. Uh, Stochastic obviously pointing out some up, upside momentum there. And the RSI as well is showing that. So some pretty drastic price action. And again, that's why we see the entire cryptocurrency market cap um, kind of up a significant amount. Up a few billion dollars from yesterday, I believe. I think it was like 170, 172 billion for a lot of yesterday and some of the days prior however we're finally seeing a bounce off of that and then on the weekly or on the hourly here you can see again we got that candle to push actually above that 50 moving average which we were slightly below it for the past uh, day um, but we actually got back above it and you can see this pretty big hourly candle right here so this happened very recently 5086 all the way up to 5224 roughly uh, currently, though, we're still trading there, and still we're kind of indicating some upside momentum on the four hour. On the one hour, though, looks as though the momentum might be shifting downwards. However, we saw that recently, uh, earlier today, but we already saw that bounce back up. Um, I don't look at, like to look at the stochastic on the hourly as much, just because it's a smaller time frame and not necessarily, um, I guess, as informative or necessary, I guess. Uh, switching over really quickly, though, to Litecoin. On the daily, you can see we have pulled back a significant amount back to that moving average, uh, more compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin's kind of been in the same area for uh, about two weeks, actually exactly two weeks, kind of been hovering in this range right here. However, Litecoin has pulled back a, a more significant amount. You can see that from its all-time high of the last few weeks, about $100, um, it's kind of pulled back pretty significantly to about 74-ish. Bitcoin, however, is kind of just, you know, you can see this pattern here, how it's kind of been hanging out here, although granted it's a little bit down. This is a little more significant with Litecoin here. Hopefully with Litecoin finding support soon, though, because you see uh, it comes to kind of the end of this, this pattern here, as well as the 50 moving average right here. 50 day moving average, what I think is really important there. Hopefully that will be able to find support there if, if we do get back to that area on the chart. You can see the stochastic kind of curving up as well, so that's that's good to see. Again, the weekly though with Litecoin, same deal for Bit, same deal for Litecoin as it is for Bitcoin and really the rest of the market. 
pretty drastic. Uh, but you can see with Litecoin, if Litecoin is really an indicator of the future, like many people say it is, or the indicator of, of Bitcoin kind of able to give you a little guidance to where Bitcoin might go shortly after Litecoin moves, then you can see Litecoin is really taking a downturn in terms of the weekly. And that probably means that, you know, we definitely have some room to pull back there. Uh, although on the daily, you don't see that. It is on the weekly. I think it is more important to look at the weekly time frames there, to be honest. Um, if you want to go to the four hour, you can see still really battling there on the four hour. With Bitcoin, we don't necessarily see that. Uh, with Bitcoin, you can see we clearly bounced above that 50 moving average. Um, but with Litecoin, you can see we are kind of testing it right now. Um, we, we're not able to get above it. And you actually see clearly right now we're actually right at that 50 moving average. So for the past uh, f five days, we've been underneath it for Litecoin. And right now we're just really trying to get above that 50 moving average right here. And then if we go to the one hour for Litecoin, you can see on the one hour we actually did get above that. So could that possibly translate into the four hour getting above that? I think that's possible. With the stochastic, uh, you can see for Litecoin it is kind of shifting upwards a little bit and our regular RSI kind of shifting upwards as well. Uh, if we go to, go to the one hour again, you can see that the stochastic here is still kind of extending upwards and kind of a little, little bit of a move there on the RSI on the, the um, the one hour for Litecoin. So we really do see some upward momentum there for Bitcoin and Litecoin in the last few hours. Um, ultimately though, I think the most important thing to keep an eye on is that where we are overall in the macro trend is that ever since breaking 6,000, finding support around 3,000 and really finding a lot of volume there as well. As you can see here, a lot of volume start to come in. Uh, we really tried very much to get back over 6K. And we, we're not even close yet, right around 5,300. Uh, that's kind of the, the very strong resistance there. So if that can be broken, um, then I think a lot of things can change. But this is on the weekly here. Um, this is really, really an important area. So this is really the third week in a row that we've been in this area. Um, this candle closed right, right there on that moving average. And it's been two weeks. And these next two candles, uh, we really need to see something, whether it is finally getting above that, um, or it is breaking down and finding some lower support. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I think there is a big move coming, and I think maybe the best indicator uh, is this RSI, really. It can't stay up here forever. It's super overextended on the weekly, and I think that's really important to kind of gauge what the possibilities are in the short term for where we're going to go over the next few weeks. I think we do need to pull back. Um, but with that being said, that doesn't mean that we will. I just think it's likely and also more healthy for the market right now. I think it would just be better overall for crypto and Bitcoin and Litecoin and all these coins to continue going up if we did have a healthy pullback beforehand. However, we still haven't seen that. Um, and for that, again, we can go in the daily and just see quite, you know, just how long we've really been testing that. And it's really been ever since that pump on April 2nd. So it's been about, it's been two weeks as of today. We've been here for two weeks. And within those two weeks, we have not pulled back to the moving average. So another thing on, on the one out on the one day here, on the one day here, we still haven't pulled back to that moving average right here, uh, which again, I think would just would be healthy. If we go back, you know, looking on the daily here, do we usually pull back to the moving average? Yes. Um, let's go back to the, the bull market because this is a current bear trend that we've been in for quite some time. I kind of want to look at a bear market trend though, or a bull market trend. And the bull market trend seems to be this. You get extensions from the 50 moving average. Clearly you can see it everywhere. Literally everywhere you see these extensions here, here, just the entire thing, you know, there are extensions everywhere. But what you see many times when it's not extended is you see it pull right back to the moving average. In this instance, it went below and immediately went and actually bounced all the way back up. So what was this? 18 to 2900, 1800, 2900, and then back to 24. And then continuing up all the way to 44. And then you know the story of the, the bull market of 2017. But you just see it continuously pull back to this moving average. Um, it seems to be, if we just like for fun measure these, this is about, you know, two months before a major pullback, about two months before a major pullback. So, you know, how long has it been since we've had a pullback to the moving average? Uh, if we take a look here, uh, I guess we could start it here because this is really the last time we were there. Currently it's been about 20 days. So we might not see, you know, it's also a good point that we might not see another pullback. 
Um, granted, we're not in a bull market yet. However, if we turned out to be in a bull market, um, if things did get really bullish, then I would maybe consider that we could continue for a little bit before having a pullback. Um, would that be good? Maybe. I, I personally think we, it would just be better if we pulled back, especially because even if we are entering a bull market, we're still there's so much bearish tones in the market that I think it would be better to get a pullback to that line. I just think it would be healthier overall for the market. With that being said, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that button and hit that other button, and I'll see you in the next video.